Ladies and gents, we have a very special guest. Today, we're talking to the lovely Robin. Robin's had an amazing transformation since I met her last year, last October, I think it was. Both on the scale, Robin lost 31 pounds on Vegan Slim and Sustain, and she's actually lost another 11 pounds since the program finished. And also off the scale, in terms of habits, mindset, overcoming cravings, emotional eating, the list goes on. <laughs> the list goes on, Robin. But we're gonna get into all all of that today. So, Robin, hello. Hey, nice to see hello. you, Ryan. And you, thank you very much for joining <laughs> me for this. I think this is going to be interesting for the folks at home watching to sort of um, extract, you know, lessons and tips and insights from, from your story over the last six, eight, nine months, almost a year now since you've yeah. been trying to lose some weight. Mm -hmm. Let's start, I think, with you telling us a little bit about where you were at in terms of weight loss and health goals, in terms of your journey into veganism mm -hmm. and eating before you actually joined Vegan Slim and Sustain, what did you struggle with prior to joining? Well, I'd been vegan for about six and a half years. So I had done the gamut of everything, you know, going super plant-based, doing, you know, juicing. I watched the YouTube videos, you know, all of those things. Um, we found junk vegan food at some point. So my weight had gone up and down. Um, but when I reached out to you, it was probably the highest it had been since you know since I had started being vegan. So I knew that I didn't know what I was doing. Like there was something not right. And I think when I reached out to you, I was actually in a plateau because I had la lost some on my own. But then I was like, what am I doing? You know? So I had a lot of knowledge but didn't really know what I was doing with it. So yeah. yeah. I think that's a really fair summary. And I think a lot of people at home would resonate. It's one thing going on YouTube and understanding, you know, from reading the books and watching the plant-based doctors, understanding the tenets of plant-based eating, mm -hmm. but then actually going to apply it with precision and, and sort of customization to what you need and what meals you'll enjoy. Mm -hmm. That's where people get stuck. I mean, that that's one curious thing about your journey. A lot of people come into Vegan Slim and Sustain and they don't have recent weight loss experience. But mm -hmm. you, you were actually losing weight prior to the program. As much as you've just said before joining, there were problems mm -hmm. with the junk food, you're at your highest weight in recent mm -hmm. history. But prior to you actually signing up with me, you were actually losing weight. Do I understand that correctly? Have I got the timeline? Yes, I yeah. was losing weight. Mm -hmm. well, and then it stopped. Yeah, well, that's the curious thing to ask then. I mean, now you look back with the knowledge you have now, what mm -hmm. was going wrong? Why, why had you plateaued just before joining, despite all the knowledge you have? Yeah, well, it's funny because I remember that first day of your program, you had sent me the meal plan like that morning and I had to work. So I had already packed my lunch. So right. I took pictures of what I had packed. And right. I, it was funny because you were like, oh, you're doing fantastic, but you're not eating enough. Like that potato was not enough, you know? So I think I had cut my calories way too much, but I also wasn't adding in like beans or fat. Like if you remember in the beginning, I was like avocado, tahini, are you kidding me? <laughs> this can't work, you know? So that was the biggest thing. I think I wasn't eating enough, but I wasn't doing the right combinations of foods either. And when you say the right combination of foods, do you mean uh -huh. to satisfy you and to feel nourished? I presume that's what you mean. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Had and, no idea. And what do you think the consequence of that was? So for a lot of people that are, are very aggressive, whether they know it or not, like you say, mm -hmm. the time, you know any better. So we, we're not mm -hmm. going to, you know, grill you for it. I didn't grill you for yeah. it when you came in the program because you didn't know better. But mm -hmm. do, you, do you think the consequence of, of that was that you were therefore getting really hungry and then going to the vegan junk? Is that what was happening? I don't think so. I was pretty disciplined through that time, but I was hungry. I wasn't satisfied. I was really, I don't even think I was doing 1200 calories a day. And that's just, it's crazy. But that's what I knew at the time was, oh, cut them down. You know what I mean? And don't eat this much. And and I don't think I was even getting in 1200 calories. So yeah. at this point, you'd got all the vegan, you'd gone through that sort of vegan junk phase that a lot of people oh, struggle yeah. Oh, we've got all the alternatives. Let's try this. <laughs> oh, this TV advert, the new Burger, Burger King, you'd gone through that phase. Yeah. And yeah. you were strictly whole foods plant based. Mm -hmm. and, and But the weight's not moving anymore. You lost a bit of weight. You lost, I think, was it around 10 pounds before you signed up with me? I actually lost 12. 12, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. 
then you start getting stuck and you're thinking, hold on, I'm doing everything right. What on earth is going on? Exactly. I can't uh, eat anymore. I'm hungry. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, exactly. If I'm hungry and I'm not losing weight, well, <laughs> what, what am I going to do here to try and further lose weight if I'm already hungry, right? Yeah, exactly. This is, this is what you see with people that go very severe, again, mm -hmm. whether knowingly or not in your case, with their calorie mm -hmm. deficit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in hindsight, we can look back and we, go, we can simply say, yeah, you were under eating. You were under eating and metabolically that wasn't creating the efficiency. Your body had probably got used to quite a strict calorie deficit. Yeah. And it was, and this is a principle I've spoken about a few times on the channel called metabolic adaptation. And your body's like, nope, we're not doing this anymore. Yeah, exactly. It gets, it gets really clever at using those calories effectively and you yeah. no longer lose fat. Mm -hmm. Exactly. By eating so little. Yeah. 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 Very frustrating. Not knowing. <laughs> Frustrating, I imagine confusing, but then of course we met. Yeah. <laughs> or we met properly. Because you'd been you'd been following me for a little while, I, I believe. That's what you said. Yeah, I had. I had been following you for a while. I had seen you on Tia. She had a great experience with you. I watched your videos and you know I had reached out, but I didn't make the decision the first time. Um and then I have osteoarthritis in my knee, so it's huge because the doctor's like, you need to lose 30 pounds. And I'm yep. like, how am I going to do that? And so for to have surgery or to have it taken care of. So that was a huge motivator for me that I needed to get this off. You know, I knew I was heavy. I knew I needed to lose weight. I wasn't in any delusion that I was way overweight, but to actually have somebody say to you, you've got to do this to, to, to enhance your health and be able to really walk, you know, it was like, uh, yeah, I know, but I wasn't doing anything about it then, you know, so it wasn't affecting my life in a big way until that doctor was like, oh, yeah, you got to lose 30 pounds. So it, it was the potential of a health scare that created that urgency in you. Is that fair to say? Yeah. The motivation. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. He was like, I don't want to hurt your feelings. No, you're not hurting my feelings. I know I'm overweight. <laughs> and yeah. sometimes, sometimes that's what we need to hear, right? Yeah. I mean, people yeah. are treading on eggshells in the very sort of politically correct world now. Um, and as you said, you weren't in denial of it, but sometimes you just need the feedback and, okay, I need to do something about this doc. Let's get to work. But do you know what else it was? I was angry with myself. I was angry with myself that I put myself in the position that I couldn't have something done that I needed done because of my weight. And I was like, what are you doing? That's crazy. So sometimes when people, Sometimes people, when they have a health scare, when they feel that frustration with themselves for letting, you know, their weight go and, and mm -hmm. bad habits creep in, mm -hmm. they get a crossroads where they're up, they either get frustrated by it and it drives change like it did for you. Yeah. Or they just accept and they're just like, whatever. And they use convenient excuses like, well, the damage is done now. I've only got one life. I'm going to live it. I'm going to have fun. Health yeah. is just genetics anyway. My mother had a slow metabolism. Yeah. My question to you is, and we didn't even know we were going to talk about this today, but it's really fascinating stuff, I hope, for people at home as well. Mm. But why didn't you just accept that? What was different about this time? Why did you go, yeah, I've got work to do? Or was it simply that word from the doctor that made you go, okay? Well, I had already known, but, you know, I have grandbabies and I have, you know, some of my sons haven't had children yet. And mm. I can't even, you know, walk down the beach necessarily or, you know, I couldn't do so many things that I was like, what am I going to do? I'm going to look, you know, much older than I am because I can't walk, you know, and that bothered me. So him saying that it was like, I have to have this done. I have to do this. I don't know how I'm doing it, but yes. it needs to be done. You know, well, so it was, that, it was that key in the ignition, that kick in the backside, and and then you figure it out after, right? Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, shortly after that, we met, mm -hmm. and you know, so under eating. Just to go back a couple of minutes in the conversation, under eating prior to joining Vegan Slim and Sustain, metabolism mm -hmm. being like, no, we're not doing this anymore. Yeah. What else, though, in your recent history, last couple of years, what else have you struggled with from a food perspective? Because I'm thinking the emotional ties to food that we spent so much time talking about, the battle mm -hmm. with cravings, the bad habits, the mindset, the, the you know, sometimes, I hope you don't take this the wrong way, but sometimes mm -hmm. lack of positive thinking, which we spoke about many times throughout the program and sort of defeatist attitude, which now you're the opposite of, brilliant. <laughs> But at the time, these were barriers to you when we first met. So can you just touch on the other struggles you had before sort of, you know, being the same? It was, I had huge emotional stuff, stuff I didn't really even realize until I joined your program. 
you know, um, some of it I thought was stress eating and you kind of pointed out that it was reward eating. So, you know, I'd go to I'd go to Burger King and get the impossible burger and French fries because I was stressed and I deserved it. Not sure why I deserved the junk food, but I deserved it. You know, um, I had a lot of stories from my past, you know, just a lot of stories. It's just like everything revolves around food when you have a celebration, that kind of stuff. No, it doesn't have to. You can spend time with your family and not worry about the food. You know what I mean? That was a big one. Um, you know, recipes that you pass down from your family. And now my boys don't, my kids don't get those. That was huge. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm teary eyed. Like, it's like, oh, mom doesn't make this anymore, or that anymore, you know, but it's not healthy for you. So no, we're not having that. Um, and I wasn't a positive thinker in the beginning. I think I'm much more positive now, much more. Like, I don't know that I felt that I deserved it in a lot of ways. You know, it's like I was just destined to be heavy. My age had a factor in that. You know, you always hear that women at a certain age, they just can't lose weight. My metabolism, my restrictions on exercise, like we had a big thing on that off and on. So, you know, and a lot of restrictions, but you really helped me to navigate all those emotions and really reflect. Sometimes I didn't like you very much for making me reflect, but you know, <laughs> I just like, I'm going to be nice, but I don't want to be nice. And I got to think about this, but a lot of reflection, it didn't just change with my eating and thinking that way in my weight. it changed my whole life. I mean, my daughter is like the way you reflect on what you say now and apologizing. And she goes, mom, it's not just changed the way you think about food. It's like changed your whole life. Mm. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot there. It's, uh, there is a ripple effect to this, and you've experienced it, and you've heard me talk about it, I'm sure. But it, it just, you, the way that this forces you to become self aware about your own behavior easily can translate into other areas of life. Oh, yeah. Um, and so that's obviously what you've seen. And mm -hmm. I think the, the buzzword that I want to use here is responsibility. It's like, no, this is on me, and I've got to do this, and I'm in charge. Mm -hmm. And you don't feel like it, but I'm in charge of my thoughts. I'm in charge of my habits. And look, it's really tough at, at the start. You can attest to that. But once you begin to change and you get the first couple of wins, and we're going to talk about you know some of those early wins for you and why they were so important in just a second. But once you get a few good wins under your belt in the program, it's just that your brain lights up. It's like it starts to get addicted to that positive feedback loop. And then you start yeah. climbing, you build... I always talk about, you probably heard me say, that momentum being this invisible force of weight loss. When clients have momentum, they feel on top of the world. They feel invincible. They're sending me messages like, Ryan, this is amazing. I'm so glad I did this. You know, I'm, I lost three pounds this week. My cholesterol's dropping. My doctor's going to take me off starting. It's win, 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 and positivity. When they're in a rut or they're in a plateau or they're struggling, it's all very negative. And I don't take it personally. Like, this is my job. I'm used to dealing with it. But it's tough to see that sort of binary sort of switch in people sometimes. So I think oh. momentum is a huge, huge thing. So oh. for you, I suppose nice segue is you, you start with me. I You fill out your intake form. I design your meal plan over a couple of days. I get that back to you for Monday of week one. We had a bit of a, a quick start, didn't we, you and I? We book our first coaching call in that first week. You start adhering to the steps via trainer. I, I set you the step targets and the slow go cardio method. What was the, thinking back to those first few weeks, I know it's a couple of months ago, but yeah. what do you, well, last year rather, what do you remember as being sort of the easiest things and, and sort of the, the, let's say the easiest wins and victories early on in the program? Oh gosh, I think the easiest was that you did a meal plan. That was super easy. Knowing what I was going to eat, like I think you give us two choices the first week that we can choose from. So knowing exactly what I was going to eat, like that was easy. Having everything for it. The meals were simple to prepare. They were good, like super good. And um, so that was really good. The accountability, you're being accountable to you is huge for me. And I think we talked about that before. I'm kind of a people pleaser. So, man, I didn't want to upset you with anything. So that was that was a good that was a plus for me to be a people pleaser. Um, and I really wanted this to work. And I really put my all into it, but it was just, like I said, you were really easy to reach on trainer eyes. You answered my questions right away, you know, and like I said, the meal plan, the food's good. You don't have to be so extravagant. Like, you know, it can be simple and it can be good. And I didn't have to worry about that. 
And that was huge. So, you know, I knew what I was going to eat for breakfast and lunch. And, you know, I work, so I take that with me. I knew what I was going to eat for dinner, you know. So it was simple. And the simpler it was, the easier it was for me. I still stick to those meals. I'm still eating the same things because they're the program, you know, months and months. Yeah. So and I think I think that's uh, that willingness to be repetitive with meals. When I see that in a new client, I'm like, oh, this is brilliant. This is going to be a fantastic client to work with because they're not a, a, a self-labeled foodie. They don't feel like they need loads and loads of variety. Mm -hmm. They're not necessarily putting the taste of meals or the enjoyment of meals on a, on a special pedestal where everything has to taste delightful and they need a load, they need loads of different flavors and textures yeah. all the time. Like just that willingness to be like, no, this is functional. This is just for fuel. I'm just, I'm, I'm not going to worry about it tasting like gourmet Michelin star food or like, just give me stuff that is practical and easy. Yes. And um, yeah, you always resonated with that. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot you've covered there. There's, there's a lot you've covered there, but no, good. Thank you. I, I think that's all helpful stuff for people. To mm. hear. I asked you what was the easiest part. So we talked about the accountability, simplicity, mm. that sort of thing. What was the hardest part of those opening weeks? I, I, I imagine, not to be presumptuous and put words in your mouth, I imagine you're going to say some of our conversations because <laughs> even when you and I got on like a house on fire, I feel, maybe you'll disagree. You know, there were moments where, you know, I think we were both in our heads thinking, oh, have I risked offending the other person? Because yeah. the nature of talking about, like we said earlier, emotional eating, cravings, limiting beliefs, self-sabotage, you expressed a couple of minutes ago feelings of deserving around having a slim body. Yeah. These are difficult subjects. So yeah. I'm being presumptuous that what was the hardest part of those opening weeks? So the the main thing that was the hardest was that I was living in a household. My daughter, I live with my daughter and son-in-law and my right. two babies. Now my grandbabies and my daughter are vegan. They weren't obviously, she wasn't on the program. And sure. then my son-in-law is not. But I yeah. swear, I swear they ordered pizza that week i felt like it was like more than ever and like pizza is like a downfall for me and i was like are you kidding me right now so and then my daughter usually cook because she stays home and i work and then i had to prepare my own meals and i remember i think i even messaged you at one point and i was like gosh just preparing this food is just like ugh, i have to do this every day and i remember you saying to me well i don't understand the problem and then you said something and you go, is it just laziness? And that was one of those moments where I was like, gosh. I hate this guy. <laughs> I hate him, but he's right. I'm just being lazy. Yeah, I am. I didn't want to have to do that when I came home from work. And it wasn't about time. No, it wasn't about time. But what it, what was more difficult, though, based on what you're saying here, is you, you had it. Not intentionally, but it was being rubbed in your face, your old lifestyle or habits from your old lifestyle. That was being rubbed in your face, not intentionally, I'm sure. But I'm sure they weren't like, Mom, eat this pizza away in front of you. I hope not, anyway. Um, but, you know, I think had you not have seen that, it would have been much easier to stay motivated to do yeah. the crap. It's mm -hmm. only because you had a clear sort of view of the other side of things, the other options. Mm -hmm. That convenience was so thrust in your face that you were like, Oh, I hate that I have to do all this work. But if that was normal in your household, I don't think it would have been a big deal to you. Right. You know? Yeah. Like, like I'm making the pasta dish on the stove and the pizza's next to me. And, they're, and my son lost like <laughs> on his plate. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> So how did you get through that then? What what tips do you have? Because there'll be a lot of people at home. that, And I'm, I know this from having interactions with my audience. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people at home watching this right now going, Oh my goodness, that's me. I'm trying to eat healthily, but it feels like people are enabling my bad food choices by eating X, Y, and Z in my kitchen, my household. Do you have any advice to those folks? Like, what what did you do that worked so well in those opening weeks? You know, it's funny. I think you know we had talked about motive, you and you talk about it in your videos too. I think about motivation and discipline. Sure. And you were like, you know, motivation kind of wanes, and I'm like, yeah, okay, Ryan, motivation kind of wanes, but. Then it was like, I know my, my daughter had got Burger King for the kids at a softball game and they were sitting in the car and she goes, are you going to be okay? Are you going to be okay? Yeah, sure. I'm fine. And then I smelled those French fries and I was like, oh, now I just want to like, you know, kill them. But no, not for literally, but you know what I mean? And I didn't touch any of it and I didn't eat any of it. And I was like, this is discipline. This is discipline. This isn't motivation. This is just, I'm 
I'm going to do this. I don't care what they're doing. This is what I'm doing. And like I said, with on the program, when my son-in-law did that it was earlier in the program, but I wanted to know that it worked. So I wanted you to have all the information from me and to be able to say to you, I have followed the plan. So for me, it was kind of like, I want to see if this plan of Ryan's works, number one, you know, because I watched you and I saw you, but we hadn't built, you know, a huge relationship at that point. And I was like, for me to know if this works or not, I have to stick to this. I have to, or he's not going to know. He's not going to know if it's working or not working for me. And I want him to be able to troubleshoot if it's not. Mm -hmm. you know? So for me, that was a big thing. Yeah. And, you know, that's, you know, there's many, many things that I enjoyed in my time working with you. But one thing sincerely that made you a pleasure is your compliance was fantastic. And I know you might have a, a slightly contrary story where you're like, oh, but on week seven, I did this. And week 12, I did, like, I made this mistake. But honestly, overall, your compliance was absolutely fantastic. And I suppose what you're saying there is, how can you judge something? How can you judge if a program, a method is actually going to help you? If you know, mm -hmm. fair shot. So that was, you think that was the belief that helped, or one of the beliefs that helped your consistency in your head. You're like, okay, everyone around me is eating poorly. I'm not going to do that because I've paid this money. I want to make sure this works. You know, I want to see if it works. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely. That account and that accountability with you. You know what I mean? Like, but yeah, you pay for the program. You know what I mean? You're like, I'm paying this money and it took me a while to decide to do it. You yeah. know, I was like, darn it. waste it. It's a big decision. It's an investment. Yeah. And I was like, nope, I'm doing this for me. So mm. I made that decision to do it for me. And it's probably one of the few times in my life where I've made a decision for myself right. to do something for myself and not just my kids. And like, mm. no, this is for me and I need to do this. Mm. So, yeah. So I was going to make sure that whatever I was doing that you could see, you know, if in fact it was working for me or not. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to veer off. I think I even had trouble going out for my birthday. Like you were like, it's your birthday. Have fun. You yes, know, I remember. now you've said it. I've forgotten that. Now you said it. I remember. Yeah. I actually yeah. have to convince you to go out to eat, ironically. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's well, here, that's an important point. Let's come on to that. I wasn't planning to. Nice yeah. second. Let's come on to that for people at home. Mm. You know, I want to make it very clear. When I talk about my program, I want to make it clear to people, this isn't some Puritan thing where I expect them to only, you know, SOS, you know, oil-free constantly every single meal around the clock. And, you know, I'm strict. As you know, I'm strict. But yeah. there, are, there are chances in the program to bend the rules. Yeah. How, how was that sort of finding that balance? How was that for you? Was that difficult? I, it, it was. Like, I think I was more of a Puritan. Unlike, like you said, you can go out, you can do, you know, you can have a meal out. I don't think I ever did until I think it was my birthday. And right. even then I was very careful. I'm like, oh, but I'm not going to lose you know, as much weight as I want to lose this week. I was very like motivated that that scale had to move. And if I veered, it wasn't going to move. Even though you told me it was not a problem. You know, I'm like, can I have a glass of wine? I don't think so. And you're like, yes, have a glass of wine, you know? So I was very, my, my daughter would say, you didn't stray. Like you were just like on it, you know? And she's like, mom, you can do this, you know? But for me, this was an opportunity in my life and my health to really get this done. Like, I just wanted to, I wanted to get this done. I wanted to know it worked and, you know, no, and, it, and it's not, it's not necessarily. A good thing. <laughs> What's not a good thing? That not you were all in like that, yeah. I mean, all in it that was a good thing, but not allowing myself to, like I said, for my birthday, like that was stressful for me, and it shouldn't have been, you know what I mean? So, I kind of made myself really restricted, but I kind of do the same thing now. But now I'm just not interested, I don't really care to go out. There's there is a difference between saying no to things and it feels like sacrifice yeah. and this happens when you're very early on in your journey it's like everything feels so forced it feels so sacrificed yeah. they know to miss the meals out etc cetera, etc cetera. to not have the pizza when it's right in front of you yeah uh, but after a time it becomes like genuine disinterest you're like no i don't really want that anymore yeah. and that's, you know there is no you know there's no how can I phrase this? There's no right or wrong on this, Robin. There's no, you know, in terms of how much should you bend the rules? How often should you eat out? Mm -hmm. 
you, you know, I have my rules of thumb, don't I? In the yeah. first, I talk about this once um, weekly meal out rule. You know, I always give this phrase, it's one in 21 meals, don't sweat it. It's one in 21. If you're having three meals a day, it's one in 21 meals. You probably heard me say that a million times. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, but as much as I stand by that, that doesn't mean you need to use the one in 21 meals. But I do remember, now we're talking about it, I do remember with you thinking, oh, I think maybe you're too bubble wrap. I think maybe we're too protective. And when you actually have to go out in the real world and when you don't have the accountability, you know, and the 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 boundaries of a very clear program and a clear structure, I was probably worried that you might struggle a bit because you hadn't learned that bounce back ability, you hadn't learned, again, I hate this term because it's so overused or incorrectly used nowadays, but balance, you hadn't found mm -hmm. that balance yet. You right. hadn't learned, as I always say, how to bend the rules. And mm -hmm. that was fear. Where mm -hmm. are you at with that now then, since the program? You're saying you don't eat out very much anymore, but now it's different because it's from a place of disinterest, so it doesn't feel difficult. Yeah, I mean, we'd have some times out and stuff, you know, um, different events. My son graduated from, you know, a program and we all went out to eat. And I think I had a, I probably had an impossible burger or something, you know what I mean? But like I said, I, I learned back early in the program that it was more about being around people. So even when I do go out, it's not as much of a focus for me to like, Oh, I've got to eat this whole thing. And Oh, I want this. And Oh, I want that. You know, it's just it's about the food. Yeah, it's about the company, the people, the social yeah. experience, yeah. Yeah, because I used and, and sorry, with that particular example, I, d I don't know if you can recall it precisely, but when you had the Impossible yeah. Burger, was it hard to go back to your plan? After that, no. was it hard to go back? No. Why? Yeah, no, it's just a moment of time. Um, it's just easy to go back. I, it doesn't, it's not the same as before. It's not really a... What happened before? before? I think it was more of a, like a treat. Oh, you know, I get to eat this. I know it tastes so good. But I think as you go along in the program too, though, your taste change too. Oh, so, yeah. So it just doesn't quite taste the same anymore. You kind of like the, the vegetables and the beans and the, you know what I mean? They taste better. I mean, even recently ketchup. I don't like the taste of, like I taste the clove in it. And I'm like, ketchup doesn't taste the same anymore. It's just, mm. it's funny how your taste change you know but we've had birthdays where i've had a little bit of cake and i just don't have as big of a piece you know a smaller piece of it or you know you just learn what you can and cannot you just learn what you can and cannot do you know what i mean you you just don't go crazy you it's learn where you learn through experience through making mistakes frankly where your boundary is yeah. oh, no, this will be too much cake or if i if, oh no, I ate something off plan yesterday, so I'm not going to eat something off plan today because that's slightly due back to back. That might lead to the slippery slope. Yeah. You know, separate them. So let's do this. Let's literally come up with, for people at home watching, let's come up with two or two or three or four maybe tips on how to avoid the slippery slope because that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about going off plan but then returning to plan. Mm -hmm. And one thing you've shared here is, well, through making mistakes, you learn when you go too far. So use that experience and that knowledge. Yeah. What, else, what else do you think we would say? And I'll chip in here as well. But what else would we say to people at home to get them to, you know, avoid the slippery slope? Well, I think I think sometimes you beat yourself up over the fact that you've eaten something that you know probably isn't the best thing for you, and then that puts you in a mindset, almost like a like a, a well, I don't deserve it. Well, I've already done this. I might as well just you know keep going. You know, I might as well have what I want. I've already messed up. You know, and that and. and if you, it's not really messing up. It's just eating something different than you should have. You just have to keep going. Then, you know, the next meal, you do the same thing. You don't skip it. You just do what you're supposed to do. And it's so easy, you know, to get back on it when you think that way, instead of, oh, well, I messed up. Let's just keep going. I'm just going to keep eating the junk. You know, it's just not, it doesn't work that way. So I think a lot of it's like an emotional mental thing. Of course, obviously. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's also the taste component and the taste buds, the gut bacteria, but no, I, I think largely it's a, a mental and emotional battle. I think you're yeah. right. Oh, absolutely. I think so. I just get right back on it. You know, get right back on that horse, man. Get just back on the wagon. But the, yeah. the particular point you're making is one way to get back on the wagon, ensure you get back on the wagon is you don't dwell on it as a, as a massive blip. And you just say, well, I've had an off-plan meal. Back to it now. Yeah. 
Yeah. Which is obviously easier said than done. It needs a bit of work to, to build that habit. Yeah, but you haven't, it, we're all human beings. You haven't done anything wrong. We all slip up. You know, that's, that's a fact in our life, period, um, everything. You know, you're not, you, you just keep going. You know, don't quit because, oh, you messed up one meal. Who cares? Yeah. And just keep going. Where that's where, and this is something at home, I want people watching this to remember this. This is a little <laughs> mantra you can say to yourself. I just said it five minutes ago, one in 21. Let's say one week, one, uh, excuse me, meal out a week. Let's say it is something like an impossible burger. Let's say it is a treat. Let's say, quote, unquote, it is way more calorific mm -hmm. than you would usually eat. Creamy, greasy, rich, all the bad stuff, let's say. It's one in 21 <laughs> meals. It's one in 21 meals. It is not enough to ruin all the good progress you made that week. It might, it might make that day tricky to remain in a calorie deficit, but it's not enough to ruin the entire week. So don't dwell on it too much. No. And I think sometimes, and I was in that mind space. I don't think you, you'll remember. I expected to lose this much a week and that much a week. And, yeah. you know, oh my gosh. So uh, something like that, me going off for one meal could have thrown me into an emotional tailspin of, oh, I've ruined my whole week. I've just ruined it. I'm not going to lose weight because of that one meal, you know? And it was like, that's crazy thinking. It's consistent. Yeah. You know, you you constantly say consistency. Consistency is what gets you there. So that really got beat into me. And I know that if I have a meal that's not, you know, what I typically would have, or if I go out to eat or whatever, it's not about that one meal. It's about the consistency that I have throughout. Sure. So that's the huge, you know, it's not about one meal. It's about what you do consistently. Yeah, and I think it's worth adding here. You're so right. The the thing I would add to that is you need the right plan to, yes. to make the consistency mean something. So with you, we made your done-for-you plant-based meal plan. It addressed all the under-eating problems you had prior to working with me. We got you out of the plateau. Mm -hmm. So you had the plan, but yeah. the, only way, the only way we could prove that that plan was useful for weight loss every week, mm -hmm. judged by the, our accountability systems, the weight tracker, et cetera, et cetera, was with your compliance, with your consistency. Mm -hmm. um, and there is a difference, as I always say, between perfection and consistency. We don't need perfection on the program. We shoot towards it. It's a good ideal. But, um, you know, if you make mistakes, even intentional mistakes, like you decide, okay, next week I've got a birthday party and I'm going to have X, Y, Z, or I might, when I go on a date with a lovely young lady, I might have a gin and tonic, for example. You yeah. know, that, that's not necessarily impulsive because you've planned it out, it's premeditated. Mm -hmm. But whether it's a mistake that you planned or not, you know, if it's still one in 21 meals, or let's say two at a push, or let's say you have one bad day in seven, it won't be enough to disrupt progress unless you believe it is enough to disrupt progress. And it gives you permission to just open the floodgates. Yep. Now I'm going to eat everything because I like <laughs> yeah. um, yeah. so, well, Can we talk about plateaus very quickly? Mm. What was your experience with those on the program? How many plateaus do you remember hitting? Oh, gosh. I mean, I did two sessions with you, so I, th I don't think it was that many, though. I think it was like maybe four at the most, but I don't even know if it was that many. Yeah, and frankly, to be honest, I can't remember. I should have, I should yeah. have, I didn't do my research, Robin. I think, in my head, I had it as three. In 24 weeks, I believe you had approximately three. Let's go with that. Um, do you remember what we did to actually overcome those? Do you remember how we got through them? I do. So originally you just cut some, you just cut some things out. Like I think first it was from my, it might've been from my lunch or my dinner. I don't know. One of those, you would, you would do that. You would take like minimize like how many beans I had or, you know, you do just a very small adjustment. Um, then I think the third one, that's when we were like, you were like exercise. And I was like, wait a minute, I can't exercise. That was a, that was a monumental moment. Um, and yeah. you were like, really, you can't do anything. And I was like, oh, that one. You already knew where my mind was going. It's like, we can do upper body stuff. We can do other stuff that doesn't cause pain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But for me in my head, it was like, oh, how dare you? You really yeah. made me reflect. That was a real trigger for me. No, and I was like, yeah. And I was finally, I was like, he's right. I can do something. So I started doing, I didn't want to do them because I thought it, it would make me look old. I started doing YouTube chair exercises yeah. and I did that for, I think the third one I was in and it worked. 
And yeah. I was like, but yeah, I really pushed on, I really pushed against that one and really had to reflect at what my trigger was and why I was so upset about it. So. Yeah, well, these are hard conversations. Yeah. And, you know, you always stuck with me and you let me challenge you, even if maybe sometimes I rubbed you the wrong way because I'm so blunt. You know I care about you, but I am so blunt sometimes, especially over text, it's difficult. Face to face, it's different because you can yeah. hear the tonality, you can see the body yeah. language. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's difficult over text. So thanks for your trust and thanks for sticking yeah. with me on it. But, People at home are going to think I'm really rude. I'm not rude, just to be clear. I'm not rude, but yeah. it's when you have to confront people on problems, like it can be, it can be difficult for people to digest and read. Um, so, sorry, the theme here with plateaus, then, or one of the themes that I want to relay to people at home is every plateau we took you through, we made very minor changes. Like you're saying, we changed the beans. I don't remember that particular example, but that sounds possible. But basically or we just up the exercise slightly, we introduce mm -hmm. some work out, mm -hmm. you know, and, and minor, minor changes in the grand scheme of things mm -hmm. get the scale moving. And this is so important to tell people at home that hitting plateaus and either A, just giving up because they're like, oh, my body's done, yeah. which you know I get really ranty about. I'm like, no, don't accept that. You just need to make a tweak, as you know now. And yeah. um, so either A, accepting, no, plateau is evidence that my body's done here, I'm stubborn, I'll never be able to do this, or B, they do actually have a troubleshooting mindset, but they're way too aggressive and they think, oh, now I need to intermittent fast. I need to skip a meal or I need to take, whether knowingly or not, take three or four or 500 calories from my diet or now I need to do a juice fast. And it's like, and now you'll agree with me on this. No, 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 no. Yeah. Like 50, 70, 80, depending on your body weight, 80 calories mm -hmm. reduce your daily diet or a couple of little increases with exercise frequently. And that's all that you actually need to keep the scale moving. Yeah. And I didn't really believe you. <laughs> no, until we did it, of course, yeah. I was like, yeah, okay, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, sure, well, okay. You're telling me to go from one cup of rice to three quarters of a cup, and that's really gonna lead to weight loss, but it does. It does, which is yeah. great. I mean, that's a great thing to know now, you know, but yeah, I probably would have been one of those people that was like, oh, I gotta cut all this out, and I gotta do this. And so, yeah, I was kind of like, okay, we'll see, Ryan. And yeah, of course, you proved yourself right again. And I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> now, how do you feel, now you're doing this on your own, how, how do you feel, in terms of mentality towards plateaus, how do you feel about them now? Because they scare the living daylights out of people when they first start hitting them. And it's funny because I have a totally different experience. I'm so used to every day a client or two or three being in a plateau. I'm yeah. so used to then tweaking something and then watching them get through the plateau. It's not always perfectly smooth, but ultimately we get them through the plateau. I'm so used to it that I'm so relaxed about plateaus. I'm like, yeah, it's normal. I know it's a normal part of weight loss. This is what I do. Like we get people through plateaus. I've done it myself when I lost weight, I hit plateaus. I know what it takes and I know they're not actually a big deal, but people, individual clients, the first time they hit a plateau, it's oh, goodness, what's going on? There's nothing wrong here. I can't believe I hit a plateau. And I'm like, chill out, it's fine. This is normal. This is part of the course. What's your attitude now towards them? Well, yeah, I was one of those clients when I thought I was hitting the plateau. I think I was all over it with you. And I was like, you're like, oh, you're usually pretty good. But you notice when it's not going well, you kind of get a little, you know, and I'm like, yeah, I do. But That's I what we talked about with momentum earlier, right at the start. Yeah. Remember, I mentioned momentum. Yeah. yeah. And then as soon as you hit that plateau, you're like, oh, come on, Ryan, what's going on? You know, yeah. And What's so, wrong? All the self-doubt. Can yeah. I do this? Is it ever possible for me to, even if I lose a little bit more weight, I'll hit a plateau again and then I'll be done, right? Yeah. And well, and I, and I couldn't exercise at that time. I wasn't doing anything. And I, I remember saying to you, you said I could do this without having to do this exercise. Yeah. You know, so my, it was a question in my mind, you know what I mean? And then now it's just, it's okay. Like I still have a, pretty long way to go. I mean, I've done really well and I'm super proud of myself, but I still have a ways to go. And I know as I get closer to my goal, it's probably gonna take me a little bit longer, yeah. but it's okay. Like, it's okay. I'm working on it. I'm working on it every day, every week, every month. And if it takes a little bit longer and I hit a plateau, that two week period that used to, in the beginning was like, oh, I'm just gonna die. Yeah. It's not such a big deal anymore because it's a, it's a way of life. It's going to happen. And, and in the beginning, it was like, it needs to happen now. And I think a lot of people that are overweight is like, oh, I need to lose like, you know, five pounds in a week or it's not any good. And that was kind of my mindset, you know. And now it's like, if I lose a pound, that's okay. Even if I lose like 
point eight, I'm still not freaking. You know what I mean? It's, I would have freaked out before, but now I know it. It's this is like this is how I eat. This is what I do, and it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. If it takes a little longer. Yeah, and until you get to that point where you're like, no, this is what I do now. Until you get that feeling, it it is easy to be very short termist about the numbers. Mm -hmm. It is because sometimes at first we're only doing it for the numbers and then all of the other stuff takes over and we get so addicted to the process. We get so addicted to how good and nourished and full of beans. Um, and I don't mean literally, but also literally but full of life, full of vitality. We get yeah. so addicted to that feeling, feeling so nourished that, you know, it's, it's a no brainer to stay on track even when you plateau. Whereas when you're only obsessed about the numbers, when you're very needy about, Oh, I'm going to lose 20 pounds in, you know, X amount of time, whether it's realistic or not. Whenever something goes wrong, you, it's easy to throw your toys out the pram because there's nothing else anchoring you to this process. It was only ever about the numbers. So when the numbers don't do what you want them to do, even if your expectation is ridiculous, you're just like, screw this, uh, screw this. But when you actually also feel the benefits health-wise, habit, when you have, frankly, your health scare, you know, that probably had fed in, you know, the health motives. Mm -hmm. You were not going to go off track just because the numbers were going wrong. Right. Right. It just, like I said, in the beginning, it bothered me. It did. It was, it took work for that not to bother me anymore. Like, yeah. you know, in the beginning I was like, yeah, okay, this is not making me happy. But I think I was focused on those numbers. Yes. I was focused on them a lot, you know, and now it's like, it's the way I eat. That's how I feel. This, it, is, me. this is what Robin does. Yeah. And if it takes me some time to get the rest of this off, then it does. And that's okay. You know, and, and granted I've lost quite a bit. So it's easy to say that now, but it's been a process and emotional. Yeah, why don't you tell, sorry, we didn't do this. Why don't you tell people at home how much you've lost in the last year? In the last year I've lost like 57 pounds. So yeah. That's yeah. incredible. I, like that is literally a, an amount that makes you look like a different person. I mean, it's, it, it is, it's almost a, a child. That's a, the weight of a child. Um, <laughs> what about your daughter? We forgot to mention that early on. We said we were going to mention that. But what about yeah. your I, I had been on the program for like two months. She was already vegan and she watched me and I kept saying, you know, you can do this. You can do this too. You might have to eat a little more than me. You're younger, you know, whatever, but try it. And she was pretty like, yeah, no, okay, whatever, mom. I, mean, I think it took her about two months and she started doing it and she's lost almost 42 pounds. Yeah. So, Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And Just watching what you were doing and sort of loosely following. Yeah. It's like amazing. Yeah. 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 It took her two months, but it took her two months to watch me. And then she was like, oh no, she's not going to get thinner than me. There's no way. There's no way this is happening. <laughs> so it was good competition. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Why not? Like, it, it, and again, how much easier is it when there's finally, I mean, we talked, you know, half an hour ago about the battles of feeling like you're isolated in your journey and everyone else in your household is ordering takeout. Yeah. How much easier is it now to have someone aligned with how you eat in your house? Yeah, absolutely. It's so much, it, it is, it is easier. It definitely you don't, you don't need it. Like you have become accountable to yourself. So you don't need that now. You yeah. might have done earlier on, but you don't need it now, but yeah. it's nice to have that, isn't it? Yeah. 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 It's very yeah. nice to have it. Yeah. And it's That's nice true. to see her doing it younger and not being me like older and trying to do it. You know, I'm so happy that she's taking care of this and learning it and, you know, realizing how she can get this weight off and keep it off and be a healthier, younger person in up till she gets to my age and further. Yeah, not go into 40s, 50s, 60s or already overweight. Because it's so hard. Once you're overweight, once the damage is done, it, it's not impossible. These are the people that I help all the time, but it's so hard. Yeah. Versus, and this is, this is always my battle cry to, if there's any 20 year olds watching my videos, which is a very small percentage of my audience, sadly. Oh but it's like, get this done now. I am so glad that I nailed this. I've been eight years vegan now. I'm so glad I nailed this at like oh. 21, 22. So, yeah. because it's done, it's autopilot. And I'm, I just know, I, you know, there is an absolute trust that I will never be overweight. I just know it. I feel it. I really believe that when I say that. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, that's what you're on the verge of experiencing as well, I'm sure. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and it's awesome. And if people can do it younger, do it younger, most yeah. definitely. And you're just going to feel so much better. Your health is going to be better. You're not going to run into all these heart issues and diabetes. And I mean, there's just so many different things from being overweight. And sometimes people aren't overweight, but they're just not eating right. Like they're not extremely overweight, but 
but they're just putting so much junk into their body that's just not good for us, you know? So, yeah. yeah I mean, we're just talking about it from a weight loss frame, but you're absolutely right. It's health too, obviously. Yeah. Um, just, this is going to sound slightly random, but I'm just going to loop back to something you said five minutes ago. I just want to make it clear to anyone watching, just mm -hmm. do something about vegan slim and sustain my program itself mm -hmm. it, isn't an, it isn't an exercise free program just going back to what you said no. about <laughs> plateaus i just want to make that clear to people there are there are steps and there are workouts built into my program but of course with yourself we have to do customizations because of medical conditions yeah. so i just yeah. want to make that clear to people when well, i said to robin oh we're not going to have to do exercise that's not something that applies to all of my clients i just want to make that clear we no. do exercise as well you know. i was worried about that no and and the thing is is that if I could have done, I wanted to do all those exercises so badly. Yeah. And if I could have, man, I really would have killed it. You know, that's the way I feel. I'm like, man, I really would have killed it. It made me so frustrated, you know, and, and yeah. I was off doing the exercise that I could have done. And it might have come off more quickly than what it has, even though it's been fairly, I mean, it's been quick to me. But yeah, I mean, quick anyway, but yeah, you might have been a couple more pounds ahead, but it's yeah. not worth losing sleep over. <laughs> No, no, and I, remember, I remember remember us having conversations about that as well. And I think just just 10 seconds on this, there are, without speaking disparagingly about anyone else in this community, there are a lot of other teachers and coaches, their programs and their methods, exercise is not touched with a barge pole. And I never understand it. I don't understand why. Yes, we all agree that it is mostly nutrition and that's the biggest sort of factor in the weight loss equation. But exercise can really aid you getting into a calorie deficit. But beyond that, how awesome does it actually feel from a mental and physical well-being perspective to do exercise as well? It isn't just about the scale, and you know this as well. No, it's not. I mean, the exercise, the the diet, you know, the, the plan, I'm going to say diet, because to me it's just, it's a plan. I mean, that's what you're eating. It's You're eating healthy, so I don't like to say diet. Um, yeah. And, you know, the big thing for, for me from you was the emotional component. You actually addressed it. Yeah. That's awesome. Nobody really addresses that emotional, you know, all the backstory stuff, all the stuff that you're going through. Nobody really addresses that. And that was huge. And like I said, you pushed my buttons a lot, but I'm grateful for it. You know, like you said, you can come off kind of brash or whatever. I loved it. Like, yeah. we, you know, even though sometimes I get upset, I'd be like, oh, I'm not answering him right now because he just doesn't know what I'm going to say to him. But it it worked for me. Like yeah. it was awesome, and you were honest, and you were can't you were caring. You did care, and and by being honest, you cared. You know, mm -hmm. you didn't let me get away with all those little things that I was going through. No way, it's not happening. Yeah, no way. But you yeah. got to be transparent. That was a big thing. You said that in the beginning. You know, you have to be transparent with me. So I was transparent with you. You were probably like, oh my gosh, she's being way too transparent. These things no. are. <laughs> Not at all. There's no such thing as too much transparency. <laughs> like, there isn't. There isn't, is there, by its definition. But no, no thank you. I, I said this earlier, but again, you know, you're, you're being very nice to me here, but, you know, I, I have to pay respects to you back. Like, you let me challenge you. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's, I always talk about this idea to new clients of leaving your ego at the door because you've got a teacher now. And a lot of us after school, we don't have a teacher. So you have to, and especially, I'm a little whippersnapper, you know. Yeah, you are. You know, <laughs> the majority of my clients are infinitely wiser and more experienced than me and older than me and so it probably is a slightly strange dynamic sometimes having this little whippersnapper from from the uk ranting at them like don't do this don't do this. but when you leave your ego at the door you can actually grow because you can actually be challenged and, yeah. and you do that excellently how did your experience on vegan slim and sustain briefly how did that compare to other methods you tried in the past what was different, good and bad? I'm not trying to censor this, so you just tell me the good part, but how did it compare? You know, I think some of the programs are tight. We did the 50-50 play. Yeah. Um, we did the whole, like, I say we, because my daughter and I did a lot of this together. Okay. I did, you know, you can eat all the plants you want, you know, just as long as you eat plants. And yeah, no, well, you know, and there was, I went really, really strict. All we were eating was potatoes. We weren't eating pasta. We weren't eating rice. We weren't doing bread. We weren't doing oil. We weren't doing fat, like no fat, like no nuts, no we, avocado. We, just worth saying we don't do oil anyway, but avocados, nuts, seeds. No, so. we yeah. don't. Yeah, but I mean, in, in, in a point with us, where we just went like strict, like yeah. totally strict. Some of the meals and some of the plans are so bland. Mm -hmm. They're really like Puritan, like, 
you know what I mean? There's like no flavor, no, it just, it just didn't resonate. And you do like a bikini dressing, which was a game changer because we already did that. And I was like, oh my gosh, we get tahini. Like, and I, I, like I said before, I questioned you on the fat stuff. Really? Really, Ryan? Like I can have this? I could have bread. I remember saying to you at one point, I ha I, didn't, I didn't say I couldn't. I just said I have a sandwich every day. Sure. And you're like, you can have a sandwich every day at lunch. And it's I, a real like, plan. Do it. Trust yeah. it. Yeah. 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 But, you know, the bread thing, all that stuff, like we, we took out, you know, so we've tried... I've tried multiple different programs, you know, that it just didn't, it didn't work. It didn't resonate. It wasn't right for me. It wasn't, people didn't talk about, I mean, they do talk about calorie deficit, but they don't really give you any guidance on it. You it's know, slightly vague. it's slightly vague. Yeah. It's it like is. It just, is. a lot of people just say in this community, just, put loads of plants on your plate and you'll be fine. And yeah. you know full well, that's not that straightforward. You can't. I mean, we even did juicing at one point. I mean, it's just, you know, I tried everything. I really did try everything. And I had a lot of knowledge, but I didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. I didn't know what to do with it. And you kind of showed me and I was like, oh, I should be having some form of beans or lentils or whatever. And I'm Italian. I don't have whole wheat pasta. And now that's, that's not real pasta. That doesn't count. I hated, I hated it. It was so yeah. disgusting. I was like, no. And now that's what I eat. It, it, it's yeah. not disgusting, you know. And brown rice, yeah, right, okay. And you know, I do that now. <laughs> but being Italian, man, you have bread, you have oil, you have all that stuff. You know. How did you get over? You know, we talked about the fat, and again, just not, uh -huh. to, not to manage the conversation too much, but just for people watching at home. I don't advocate for a high fat diet. As you know, you still, with me, you were still having a very low fat diet. It wasn't a huge amount of avocado, nuts and seeds. But when I introduced them, people are terrified. If they come from like a starch solution, 50 50 plate background, people are terrified. And then after a week or two on the program, they're like revolutionized. They are like, wow. They are like, not only do I feel better, I feel more satisfied. I feel like a greater, a greater ability to put my fork down and say, I'm done because I've had a little bit of that satiating fat. Mm -hmm. But also when they watch the scale drop, they're like, and they can eat avocado and, and extend this to bread and, and process mm -hmm. fruits like pasta and cereal as well. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, it's fine. It's okay. I'm still here. I'm still alive. It doesn't actually affect my progress like I thought it would. Yeah. So how did you get over the carb phobia? Uh, sorry, not the carb phobia, the fat phobia rather. I, well, I think the proof is in the pudding because, like I said, I, I did reach out to you and go, are you sure that I can have this avocado and this, Ryan, that's fat, you know, because I had, like, removed it. The, the fat you wear, right? Yeah. It was like, that's that's your mentality is I can't possibly have this fat. And then, like you said, just trust it. Yes, this is fine, you know. So then you do it, and like you said, and then this, the scale, you know, start, starts dropping and you're like, oh, so – it was pretty exciting that I could have those things though. <laughs> it sounds terrible because it's not a lot, but no. just you can have it. It's like, oh, I can have an avocado sandwich, you know. So when I asked that question five minutes ago, if, like what, what was it about vegan slim and sustain that clicked so much? Like, what how did your experience compare to other methods? For you, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but just to summarize everything you've said, uh -huh. there, the thing that stands out is it felt more felt less restricted i want to say like it felt less limited you know i'm still it's weird because in my head i'm still like pretty strict and I, I you know it's just i do have my own slight sort of nuanced views on things but generally it's it's a whole foods plant-based diet mm -hmm. and with a couple of ryan adams tweaks but generally it's a, it's the main fundamentals of a whole foods plant-based diet yeah um, but it was there was probably was it is it fair to say it's less rules and that made it more enjoyable for you you could actually enjoy the meals more because there were more practical foods like breads just so easy to make those sandwiches for lunch so easy and then taste wise to have a bit of that fat was that it you think i think so i think so and like a tablespoon of maple syrup in the oats yes. like i wouldn't have done that before I wanted to, but I wouldn't have done it. It would have been like, oh. yeah, to be fair, I think like McDougal yeah. advises that, but a lot of people, they get so Puritan that they're terrified about it and they don't do it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and the sandwiches were a game changer for me. Your hummus. It's awesome. Like I, it has tahini in it too. And I'm like, I have and that. You lose weight eating it. Yeah. I have that like almost every day for lunch, but 
my daughter has it and my grandchildren didn't really like hummus. They love your hummus. Like, I'm like, guys, there's no hummus left and the kids have eaten it with their veggies. You know what I mean? So that was a huge game changer to be able to make a sandwich and take it, you know, take it to work and it's good and it's filling and you have a piece of fruit with it. And so, yeah, that was, that was big. I think I, you allowed me to be able to have those things. Mm. But I wouldn't have allowed myself because I was like, hell no, Ryan. <laughs> yeah. And for me, it's, it's no problem. Like I'd run the numbers. I've done the math. When I was doing meal planning, I knew this would work. And there's always a bit of trial and error. There can be some teething issues in the first week. Mm -hmm. But I knew if we stuck with this, this would work. And it did. Mm -hmm. um, and so as soon as you start seeing that scale moving, you have a little bit more trust in the program. I know you trusted me at first. Otherwise, you wouldn't have signed up, right, with a stranger from the Internet. Yeah. But that hopefully you felt more trust after you start seeing that scale move and you go, Okay, maybe this guy does know his stuff, right? This works. Well, you yeah. got me. I was in that plateau, and the first week I was out of it. So yeah. that was, you know, when you're you eating more food. Yes. Yeah. Because I messaged you and I said, this is too much pasta. Yeah. You can possibly eat all this pasta. You can't yeah. possibly eat this. It, it was, it was more filling foods because I was eating whole wheat pasta. I was eating, you know, a whole wheat, like brown rice. I was eating things that were fiber filled, yes. you know, with the vegetables and the fruits and the, you know, so it was filling me more, you know, and the beans and all of those, just the combination of everything made me full. I wasn't hungry, you know, so that was big and drinking the water. Cause I was probably drinking, that was the other thing. I was probably drinking some of my calories, right? <laughs> drinking more, more calories than I should have. Oh, juice. Oh, this. So the water was a big thing too. That's all I drink now is water. Mm. Mm. Which I hated as, water. as you know, we have juices and smoothies on the program. They're part yeah. of meal plans. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's. I, I do think a lot of people report back that they they feel a, a greater degree of satisfaction when they're actually chewing, which makes perfect sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. If you had to sort of sum up, and we may have already touched on this stuff, so we might be going in circles. <laughs> Just your couple of biggest wins, breakthroughs, because I've got a list of two or three breakthroughs that I've observed with you. I want to see how they line up. For you, what do you think the biggest wins or breakthroughs were? Oh, gosh. What were my biggest wins and breakthroughs? You know, I've a lot of them already, but just to sum it up. Yeah. I mean, I really, I think the emotional component was huge for me. I really do. I think really reflect, you really, you really challenged me to reflect on myself to figure out why I had eaten the way I did, why I gave up when I did, why it, my stories, you know, how I grew up eating. I mean, the emotional component, I always say this, nobody talks about it. And it's huge, huge. I mean, geez, I'm 59 years old. I've been doing this for 59 years the wrong way. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that, that was a, a, a huge thing. So that was a huge breakthrough. I think that, um, also, the eating, not getting upset because I'm not losing like five pounds a week or, you know, a pound is fine. Like that mentality of this is this is for the long haul. Yeah. This is how I eat. This is what I do. You know, those types of things, you know, that that has made my life less stressful <laughs> and less hard on myself because I think I was super hard on myself, really hard on myself. I think I disappointed myself quite a bit bit here and there through the program a little bit that you weren't disappointed in me but right. i was harsh on myself and, I'm not and isn't that interesting when you're you have a higher standard not standard actually mm -hmm. you have a higher amount of weight you'd like to lose every week than your coach has in mind for you isn't that interesting yeah it is. And I remember you saying sometimes, like, I do this, like, like, I do this for a living. Like, you're okay. Like, you're good. And it was like, it, and I almost like, why are you out thinking me? Why are you deciding that your opinion on how much weight you should be losing is more important than mine? And I didn't mean to sound condescending, but it's like, this is what I do. Trust me, Robert. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, I thought I knew better, you know, oh, no, I should, because, but I was in that mindset, Ryan, you know, I have to do this. Impatience, impatience, I need this to come on. I yeah. do, yeah, I do, you know, and, and that has changed now. And, I mean, it, it's been a process of that changing, but as you start to lose that weight, you build that confidence, you feel better, 
It's easy. You know, it just becomes easier. Your taste change, your mentality. It's just, it, it's a huge thing. It's not just the diet. It's not just losing weight. It's the mentality of it. It's the living your life and feeling good. And so it's just such a huge thing. It hasn't just changed my eating. It's changed my whole life and the way I look at life. Like you said earlier on, an hour ago, perhaps, ripple yeah. effect of this stuff. Yeah. yeah. Huge. And you uh, used to say that. And I was like, yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. This is just right. Awesome, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's because it changes your behavior and mm -hmm. that translates. Um, so, yeah, sorry, the question was biggest wins and breakthroughs. The two you've mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, one being cutting emotional ties to food and the other being the other being sort of expectation management and and not being super impatient with the numbers and not getting downbeat about them. That's pretty much what I've said as well. I made a list of three things. And the first thing I wrote for you in terms of breakthroughs was finding a healthy and sort of suitably balanced, again, hate that term, balanced way to eat vegan. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't too extreme or aggressive. The calorie deficit wasn't too severe, but actually, you know, this mantra I always talk about of um, moderate calorie deficits, not really aggressive ones. Mm -hmm. um, two, cutting your emotional ties to food. So we, we're on the same wavelength with that. And the third thing I put is, is positive self-talk. Mm. And when you came to me, I don't think you'll take offense to this, I think you'll largely agree. Mm -hmm. When you came to me, there was this sort of, slightly at times, you, you were always upbeat, you are an upbeat personality, mm. you're wonderful to interact with, but there, with regards to talking about you and your progress, there was sometimes this, I would say almost defeatist, almost self-pitying attitude. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's a bit harsh? Or do you think I'm fair with that? I think you're fair. Yeah. Lisa, <laughs> woe is me. Yeah. Woe, woe is me. Type thing. Thing. And it, it was, I, you know, what was ironic about this is you'd have this attitude when you plateaued. And that was more understandable, even though, again, like I said, plateaus are normal and you okay. shouldn't feel disappointed or stressed about them because they're normal. I yeah. can still understand why you were, but you'd also have them when you were losing weight, worried about the next plateau or worried about, oh, but it was only 1.3 pounds this week, Ryan. Like, is that good enough? And look, I want to make clear to people at home, weight loss can always be faster. We can always make it faster. But the question you and I would always discuss is, is it worth it? Is the juice worth the squeeze? To lose half an extra pound a week, what are the consequences of that, Robin? That's always, not, we can always make it faster. It's not that I don't know how to do that. It's just that I have very clear boundaries. And I know, because I've done this over 300 times, I know when I'm pushing a client too far or when they are pushing themselves too far. I can feel mm -hmm. it. I can intuit it. I'm not a guru, but I can feel it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, those are the couple of things. So I think we probably agree about all of that. Um, yeah. here's, here's the big question. It's called Vegan Slim and Sustain, my program, right? It's not just called the Slim Vegan Program. I don't just want to help you lose weight. I want this to be permanent for you. Mm -hmm. There's no right or wrong answer here. I don't want people at home to think, oh, well, this is clearly a testimonial. So Robin's just saying all the good stuff about the program. Here's my question. Do you think you've turned the corner now? Is this it for you? Yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, I've done, I have like 15 weeks after stopping the program with you, which I struggled with not wanting to leave you. And you felt like I could. So that was good. And I'm still losing weight. So yes, like you have taught me how to do this. Like you taught me the way, showed me the way, given me the emotional support that I needed to do the breakthroughs that I needed. And am I going to be perfect? No, I'm not going to be perfect. There might be a day where I reach out to you and go, Ryan, you know, I need a little help with this. And you're, you're, you're good with that, you know, and going, yeah, let me look at that for you. So very sustainable. It's very, very sustainable. Would I have believed it? I was, I was petrified when our session start when I, when our session stopped. Petrified, like, oh my gosh, I've got to do this on my own, and I can't talk to Ryan every day, you know. But you believed in me, and I was like, okay, I can do this, you know. And I have, and it makes me super, you know. I, I always like to say you're an amazing coach, and you've done an amazing job with me. I'm so excited, but I can finally say I had to do it. Yeah. Like, you gave me the program. You gave me all the tools. You still did the work. But I had to do it. Yeah. 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 And sometimes it was harder than others, but it's so worth it. So yeah. worth it. Like, it's the best decision I have made for myself, probably ever. Like, you. Big statement. Big statement. 
It is. It truly, it truly is because it took me a while to make that decision to do this with you. Mm -hmm. And it's changed my life. It's changed my daughter's life. People around me are seeing, you know, a difference and asking questions. So it's a ripple effect. And I've always told you how grateful and thankful I am to you. You're blessed. You were a blessing in my life. You came in at the right time. Um, you really showed me like everything you say in your videos and the things that you promote are totally what you do. Yeah. If, if you can be transparent with you, you know, really be honest with you when things aren't going right. And I could have been wrong in some of the things I said, but you listened to me, you challenged me. So yeah, definitely, definitely this is doable. And if I can do it at the age that I am, where people think you cannot lose weight or that it's in your genetics or it's, it's such crap, excuse my language, but it really is crap because I never would have thought it. I never would have thought I could do this. Yeah. So definitely your program showed me the way. Definitely. And I am truly thankful for it. Thank you. Lovely words. Thank you. Some, some big compliments there. So no, I appreciate it. I appreciate yeah. you very much. As you know, you were a delight to work with. And yes, I can sit here and take maybe a little bit of the credit. Fair enough. I provide the structure, the accountability, that sort of thing. But like you rightly said, you're the person that did the work. So I must say thank you to you. I think you've maybe already just answered this question, but is there anything you would say to anyone watching this who's on the fence about joining Vegan Slim and Sustain? You knew about me for many years before joining, and then you took the plunge. Was, mm -hmm. there, anything, was there anything you would say to those people hesitating on the decision right now? Yeah, no, just jump in. And like I, I, like I said, I thoroughly, this program has thoroughly changed my life. Like I, I did not think I could do this. I never thought that I'm like 45 pounds from my goal weight, something like that, 45 or 47. It's like less weight than I've already lost. So yeah, yeah. That, yeah I never, that was like, feel real now. Yeah. Yeah. That was never. So yeah, definitely, definitely take the plunge. Like I said, it's one of the best things I've done um, ever for myself. Cause I always do for everybody else, you know, and for me to be able to take credit and said, yes, I did this. Like Ryan showed me the way, but I never would have before said I did this. I think a couple times you had to say to me, but you did this, but you had to do it. So yeah, definitely jump in. Like I said, if I can do this at 59 years old, do it now, like jump in, do it, do the 12 weeks. You will not be disappointed at all. No, I would do it. Awesome. Well, no, thank you for all your all your time, Robin. I love that. Thank mm -hmm. you. It's been, it's been a really nice conversation. Hopefully, everyone. Yeah. If anyone does want to join Vegan Slim and Sustain, you can go to veganslimandsustain.com to learn more and fill out the form to apply there, or just click the link. I'll put it down below. Thank you very much to Robin for for your time here and uh, your amazing insights and, and tips and lessons from your journey. Appreciate it very much. Absolutely. Thank you, Ryan. It's good to see you.